If you've been on what's called the internet for long enough, then you'll know that there's things that make people call it what it is. One of these being memes. With the amount of memes that have been forms of culture and considered a video, text, images, or anything that can be passed on by other people using the internet, there's going to be nostalgic memes that happen to blow up making it what it is. These sort of memes have their own way to start and their own piece of history to it, so in this video I will be covering the old and nostalgic meme dated all the way back in 2007, Sparta Remix. Let's get right into it. Before we talk about the actual history for this meme and what it's become, we need to talk about how it first started. And the Sparta Remix meme would start through a site called YTMND. YTMND is an online community back in 2001 that was created by Max Goldberg or YTMND Incorporated. The website centers around uploading meme pages for others to view, where it usually it has an image or animation at the center with a looping sound file. The website stands for You're the Man Now Dog, which is a punchline by a British voice actor named Sean Connery in the 2000 movie Finding Forrester. On February 19th, 2007, a user by the name of Keaton Monger or Keaton Keaton 999, aka Fantastic Power, on the website would release a page called 300 TMND. This is Sparta Fun Times Mix onto the website, which would later be known as Sparta Remix. The reason he decided to make Sparta Remix was because for a short time, he was remixing other YTMNDs that were popular at that moment and someone made a YTMND using the This is Sparta line when the 300 trailer had just came out and he remixed it. The reason it was uploaded to YTMND was because at the time, it felt like the best place with an engaged audience where you could upload whatever you wanted. The page would feature a looping gif of the This is Sparta scene from the movie 300 as well as playing a remix song titled 300 This is Sparta. The remix was made in FL Studio and took around 1-2 to two nights to make. The page got really popular getting over 150,000 views as well as getting a 4.57 out of 5 star rating. However, even though this was the case, the meme didn't get popular until Keaton decided to extend the remix. Part of the reason he wanted to extend the remix in the first place was because there was a YTMND user named Disyati, sorry if I butchered that name, that first asked him for an instrumental of the remix to do his own. The extended remix would take the same amount of time for the original to make, that being 1-2 to two evenings, and would then release on March 28, 2007. After it was released, it was then when people put the extended remix in their videos along with Sparta GIFs. The first Sparta remix besides the original was created by Keaton himself called Dental Plan Fun Times Mix and used the unextended bass. The meme started to spread even more when a YouTuber known as Graphic Gaming uploaded a video called 300 This Is Sparta Remix on May 8, 2007 that would reach over 11 million views as of now. The video features many scenes from the movie while playing the original remix. Another video that made the meme spike in popularity was a video called This Is Sparta Last Techno Remix uploaded by a user named Lele Fonda and released on December 14, 2007. This video shows lots of imagery of King Leonidas, who was the person screaming This Is Sparta, while also playing the extended remix. The video would get over 25 million views as of now. Anyways, now that we know how the meme started and got popular, where does it go from here to now? Let's go and see. In 2008, the basic formulas and ways of making a Spartan remix were the chorus, the build-up, and madness. The chorus, also called the main automation, is the main pattern of the remix and is the most often repeated. The build-up is a segment that starts after the first chorus of the remix. The community had added freestyles and other elements that add up to the simplicity of this part. Finally, the madness is a part that refers to the breakdown in a Sparta remix that shows less complicated and more softer patterns than the rest of the remix. Usually the samples used in these parts are words or phrases from sources that are similar but some remixes just use a non-cut extension of the scene of the source they're using. Subdog444, Tachin1994, and Ravage656 are the first people who knew this formula since no one really got the concept of what were called Sparta patterns and because of this, only the chorus patterns were used and only experienced Sparta remixers could do the patterns right. Sparta remixers in their videos put Sparta GIFs as well as some strange meme visuals, as the program Windows Movie Maker was used to make these videos until people started using other editing programs such as Sony Vegas. Many of the Sparta remixes during 2009 were really standard and the aforementioned Touch of 1994 knew how to pitch shift the samples correctly at that time, so you could tell that most people during the time were not the best. Another thing that started to spread throughout Sparta remixes in this period were freestyles. 
Freestyles were custom chorus patterns that depart from the original chorus patterns but keep the rhythm and tempo. Freestyles have been heavily criticized due to Sparta Remix traditionalists, which are people who judge Sparta Remixes using valued systems, contenting to them as well as box visuals and pitch samples that ran contrary to the original purpose of Sparta Remixes. Remixers started using Sony Vegas instead of Windows Movie Maker to improve their Sparta Remixes. During 2010, Sparta Remixers started improving their remixes with the pitch shifting being considered alright in most of them. There were still others that were bad at timing, however the basic chorus and freestyles were correctly done used in this time. Pitching samples were also used more and remixers in this period liked to put visual effects in their remixes. Some more Sparta Remixers came into the community but some also left however. People started comprehending and using the basic pitch patterns but not a lot of people understood the concept of correct notes. My Little Pony also started becoming overused in people's Sparta remixes in this time frame, but Sparta Duels, which were two or more Sparta remixers who would duel or fight in rounds to see who would have the best remixes of that round with some basic instructions and basic percussion were also introduced in this time period. A user named Dreamcloud also had their own patterns for the awesomeness section of the original remix that started emerging but not used until mid to late 2014. During the 2012 period, there were two programs that were frequently used in Sparta remixes, that being Melodyne and New Blue FX. Melodyne is an audio pitch modification tool similar to Autotune, however, it's a manual tuning software besides that. New Blue FX provides helpful video editing and audio plugins that feature a product portfolio. Sparta remixer Zayla Fiore, or AWRIAS, implemented the Melodyne tool back in 2012 and experienced remixers knew how to use Melodyne in this period. Another remixer named King Sparta X37 was the most notable during this time for his memorable Sparta remix videos, which are removed by him now. They were known for making bases such as the Sparta Mario Kart base, Sparta Execution Mix, Sparta Venom Mix, and a ton more bases. In this period, hi-hats, neater box visuals, and more accurate percussion as well as correct pitches started to come around. Some Sparta remixers start using fake pitch samples, which is a sample that doesn't sound like the original but is unedited. They're usually avoided by people as they think they normally sound bad and are considered to be dishonest ways of getting samples. These samples are sometimes super stretched and use Melodyne that was starting to become more common in this time. Vibrato, stretching freestyles, and also pitch slides started to come in people's remixes. Like My Little Pony back in 2011, Spongebob, Battle for Dream Island, and Inanimate Insanity were starting to become overused in Sparta remixes. Another thing that will become more of a turning point in the later years would be people pointlessly fighting, sarcastic comments and videos, troll videos coming into the community in the mid-2013 era. Freestyles would die out in 2013 but would be reused and make a comeback for some Sparta remixers. The argument about fake pitches origination had continued in this year and Adam Rias would become a notable remixer known because of his creativity in the Sparta remixes. Note this Sparta remixer for later. Finally, something memorial that would happen this year is 6 years later, on May 9th, 2013, Graphic Gaming would go to make a Redux version of his original 300 This Is Sparta video that gained popularity. <laughs> So 2014 would be considered to be the start of the Dark Ages in Sparta remixing because of some aspects that made it go downhill. Epic visuals emerged after Adebrius made his considered good Sparta remixes at the time. He felt innovated in some many things in Sparta remixes such as ARPs, FL Studio effects, and autotune. People in this time tried to become the more appreciated remixers such as Adebrius by copying original ideas and with this, everyone started using the same idea over and over again in their Sparta remixes and another thing that started to become quite common in them were epic visual effects. Many old remixers from 2010 to 2013 started quitting Sparta remixes because of the amount of sudden immaturity that came into the community like again, pointless fighting and other reasons. The term Sparta Kids was used to describe Sparta remixers that were under the age of 13 and acted immature when giving criticism, copied other remixes sometimes, and just acted immature in general. People started to not only use fake pitch sampling, but also fake percussion. 
How fake percussions were done was by taking an FL Studio percussion and placing that over visuals. Vocodex, which is an FL Studio plugin that's a high-end vocoder. Granular Synthesis, which is a basic sound synthesis that operates on microphone timescale. And Bitspeak, which is a real-time pitch excited linear prediction codec effect. All of which were introduced into the community, however, people consider them as another way to do fake pitch sampling. Turning percussion into pitch samples also appeared after Vocodex was introduced. Finally, Spongebob and FNAF sources such as How to Make FNAF Not Scary, Animations, Elpers, Variations of Like Five Nights at Treasure Island, and Object Shows were overused to the death of them in this year. Another thing that was overused at the time was scratching and Boris effects visuals. Most remixers considered visuals to be more important than audio, and no background music, remixes that wouldn't have the bass it's using in the actual remix, were also introduced into the community. A lot of people had predicted that this was going to be the year that would kill Sparta remixing due to how dark 2014 was, but this would actually be proven wrong later in the year. Many of the classic Sparta remixers like A1, A2, A3, My Landmaster All 2, and to 93rd Spartan returned for a short time, and some other people who were not very good with Sparta remixes improved greatly in theirs. A Sparta remixer by the name of Alex the Savior, which he's now known as Gary Views, was exploding in popularity because of the ideas he had at the time, which would sadly become overused. Alex the Savior would be known for making basses such as the Sparta Valis bass in March 2017. The most overused bass made this year was the Sparta Pulse bass that was made by Jario that was starting to become infamous for how overused it was. Sparta Remix Power of 2 was introduced but also existed for a short period of time. It was to put it simply, a Sparta Remix of a Sparta Remix, which some call Spartaception. Sparta remixes of YTPMVs existed but were rare, and made by a remixer named Ukami. Veg replacing also existed in this time period, however many, and if not all, Sparta remixers considered it lazy because Veg replacing a source did nothing but retain the visuals. Freestyle pitches and 30 second note pitches became popular due to Alex the Savior and the pulse patterns, but 4x4, 5x5, and 6x6 boxes were also widespread. The problems during this time were that people were stealing other videos made by other people. Sound Goodizer was overused in the second half of 2015 as well as Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's fans ended up making a lot more FNAF remixes, which caused beginners such as Dr. Mario Prime and Sil L to rise in sub count regardless of the quality in their Sparta remixes. Another remixer known as Quackadict was one of these victims of the Five Nights at Freddy's fandom. Those were the fans who only watched his FNAF remixes and not his other content. He eventually deleted all of his FNAF related videos and made those same fans leave him by making offensive videos towards FNAF fans and eventually made them unsubscribe from his channel. Quackadict was able to rest with a 13,000 plus loyal subscriber count but his channel got shut down in January 2015 when it had around 15,000 subscribers but however, YouTube didn't give him a reason for this termination and Quackadict himself can only assume that was because of false flaggers or because he monetized content he didn't own for Sparta remixes even though it still fall under fair use. In 2016, being the 9th anniversary of the Sparta Remix trend, people on the darker side would go to say that this would be a worse year than 2014. Let's see why people would think that. Big Sparta Remixers such as Mike Conagher, Alex the Savior, Unknown Sprocket, and etc. would leave the community, however some people, like the ones I just mentioned, would come back to the community. Many remixes during this period were usually just pitch or percussion covers back in 2015 and a lot of the freestyle pitches that were popularized by Alex the Savior. Sudden pitch changes in remixes that used a different song or bass entirely were starting to become more common at the time. There were more than just Sparta kids that were trying to ruin and destroy the Sparta remix community. Sparta remixers were reacting to certain criticism and actions by making anti-channels on a specific person, for example, Antiochuskin and Samarako HD, grabbing people's IPs, and there were also people who were being hypocrites about the community being toxic and horrible when they were trying to take down people's channels all because they didn't like the person. For example, Mike Conagher, Tepecos, and Oguskin. Sparta Kids used a specific application called Pixie Tracker, which was a simple tool made to create music, sketches, chiptunes, and sound experience without knowing much about music in general. They used this to make Sparta basses, and this was frowned upon by actual Sparta remixers. 
People at this point thought that this fight has reached its final level, and that there is no community anymore, and that this is the year where Spartan Remixes will die off, and they thought it actually happened. This was usually the mindset of the community and the more experienced Spartan Remixers at the time. Twenty seventeen will mark the first decade anniversary of the Sparta Remix meme, which happened on February nineteenth. Big changes happened in Sparta Remixes such as freestyles and thirty second note patterns coming along, generic gyro styles some would say, remixes would come this year, however there were few people still making generic remixes, chord progressions and minor tones were also somewhat common on Sparta Remix videos. Many Sparta Remixers came back in this year or before and new people joined the community to start to create some new Sparta Remixes. There were also a lot of bases made compared to the previous years. Another thing that came along with the 10th anniversary was the original Sparta FL Studio project. Keaton decided to give the project of the original decade old Sparta Remix and also the extended version of it as well through a website called Sparta Remix Planet. Users needed to log in and guess the correct username and password through not only 300 username, but also 300 passwords, meaning there are 90,000 possibilities to what the correct login would be. However, people were able to figure this out, and the correct username was Callaway, and the correct password was 8. It was changed due to exposure of the correct login, but after some time, the original login credentials were brought back. When logging into the website, you'll be brought with the stems, all the parts of the remix separately, the audio, needed plugins, and the project files. In 2018, the community had evolved a bit more in favor of sampling quality. Most remixes used FL Studio's piano roll along with Melodyne in order to improve the quality of their pitch samples used in remixes. More newcomers came in and improved this year like a user named BeastMode230. In 2019, there was a variety of Sparta remixers quitting the community such as Alex the Savior, Brandon to Spartan, and Beastie, and etc. Most remixers decided to quit because others quit or they just left without reason. Some people unlisted their Sparta remix videos, but however, sometime in November 2019, most of the same remixers mentioned came back again. Yeah, this happened a lot of times. Later on February 6th, Sparta Remix Studio was released and was created by Pet297. It is the first software with the intention of making Sparta remixes and also to be created by a Sparta remixer. One major thing that would come in 2019 was the Coppa Law. The Coppa Law was one of the things that could have ended Sparta Remix as a whole since most remixers wanted to quit remixing again because of it. In fact, some wanted to quit YouTube entirely and move to other video sharing platforms such as Blair and BitChute. Until that came a new rule that was made by the FTC about COPPA that was released that saved most of the communities on YouTube, one of them being Sparta Remix. However, even though this is the case, this isn't going to be the last time the law is going to be mentioned. Technically, that is. In the Sparta Remix Discord server, which I'll link in the description, Keaton decided to upload a song called Vapor Max 06. It was then pinned in the server afterwards. In around 2020, Sparta Remixing for the first time reached out to Bosna and Herzegovina? Sorry if I butchered that again. As no evidence of early dates of Sparta Remixes in Bosna were found. The person behind this was a person called Austria Hungary, who was terminated during a copyright battle of his own fans against Omko, who was targeted by his parodies in Sparta Remix videos. Few of these videos had reached thousands of views before his old account was terminated, but then, later in 2020, Austria-Hungary returned 6 days later after his account termination, uploading his last apparent Sparta remix about Omko, until changing the title months later to where it isn't actually his last. The Omko Sparta remix uploaded in 2020 gained attention in the first quarter of 2021, reaching 2000 views like his other Sparta remixes did on his old channel. Another big thing that would happen in 2020 was false copyright claims using the original Sparta Remix base. Most of the Sparta Remixes made by the community that also used the original base were getting false content ID claims by usernames Lord Lawrence for using his song named Mermaid Man Evil. The videos weren't blocked, however certain countries could see ads on them, and no one made a video about this copyright issue. Fortunately though, later the same year, the copyright claims were removed. The person who misused the copyright system would still have their channel up right now. However, there's a possibility that it got terminated but reinstated, but that's still up in the air. However, the same issue would occur later in September where remixes using the original base were getting content ID claims again. 
Though, this time was different, because it wasn't some person who happened to have nothing to do with the original base being made. The Kanta ID claims were made by the original producer, Fantastic Power, which if you don't remember from the beginning of this video, it's the label under which Keaton made the original base. However, it's unclear if it was a fake Fantastic Power, or it was some person trying to impersonate the real Fantastic Power. But however, the policy was that ads will be shown in Sparta Remix videos. Another note to add is that a lot of remixers improved greatly this year, and some old remixers such as Ogoos and Professor Jason came back to the community. Finally to end this off, one thing I should talk about is the Sparta Remix 2020 send-off collab, which is a big Sparta Remix collaboration with the host being Vince, Dingo Orela, and David Hull and Dust Spartan, with there being a total of 18 people who helped make this video. However, what makes this a special Sparta Remix is Keaton himself making the outro for the video. I think it's safe to say that there's always going to be a dark side to a community, especially if one that's as big and as memorable as this. Sparta Remix was a meme started on the YTMND site that turned into a big meme and community after its sudden popularity from not only the site, but also YouTube videos. The community has gone through several changes on how it usually makes Sparta Remixes and has had its fair share of drama and controversy. The community is sort of in a mess state right now, so no one can really predict what's going to happen in the later coming years. I think the meme will die out eventually, and even if it does though, it'll definitely be known as a very nostalgic meme, which is why I hope for the best of it. Anyways, with all that out of the way, thank you for watching this video. I want to thank the creator himself, Keaton, for helping with this video. Go check out his fangs in the description. Follow me on Twitter if you want updates on any new videos and also want to see me post random things on there. And join my Discord server if you want to talk with me and get any updates on any new videos as well. All will be in the description. Thanks for watching. I hope I can see you in the next video. See you later.